dear participants good day to all of you i am professor dr sandeep singh gill professor in ed electronics and communication engineering department at national institute of technical teachers training and research in chandigarh uh, in this module we will be covering unit 7 of our higher module that is institutional management for entrepreneurship and we will be focusing on exploring digital marketing and branding for an entrepreneur we have divided this chapter into four sub parts the first sub part is introduction to digital marketing and branding the second is to create tools for online surveys and promotion of products and services third is uh, to communicate our message basically through effective product and service communication and the last sub part is brand creation development and management which is so essential for a uh, entrepreneur uh, to start with our module we'll look into the classical definition of marketing by the marketing guru dr philip kotler he has defined marketing as a science and art of exploring creating and delivering value to satisfy the needs of a target market at a profit so when you look deeply into this definition it talks about marketing being a science why is it a science because scientific tools analytical tools are used uh, while creating a marketing campaign it is also a art because lot of creative inputs are required while creating a marketing campaign and we are also doing all this to deliver some kind of value and satisfy some kind of needs of a target market and the whole process is aimed at having some kind of a profit for our company profit is the underlying motive and the other uh, sub parts to reach that stage is basically our methodology so marketing identifies unfulfilled needs and desires it defines measures and quantifies the size of the identified market and profit potential so basically what marketing does it is not about selling any product which has already been manufactured and pushing it into market it is about first identifying what are the needs what are the desires of a customer which he is finding Uh, that there is no product in the available which can satisfy them they are unfulfilled so we try to find those unfulfilled needs and desires then we also try to measure what is the size of the identified market what is the profit potential if all these things after analysis give us an idea of creating a profitable venture out of a product to satisfy these unfulfilled needs and desires we go forward another issue which is very important in marketing is that it is done to generate motivation in consumers to pay for the product or service or to make them consider your organization superior to your competitors which will give them meaningful benefits and value and need to be created for the consumer so you are looking at generating motivation in the consumer your marketing campaign is aimed it is targeted at generating a motivation in the consumer so that he is ready to pay for your product or service if that kind of a motivation can be generated then your marketing campaign is successful also your organization should be able to position itself as a superior organization compared to the competitors in the minds of the consumer he should feel that certain meaningful benefit certain value is being made available to him for the amount of money he is paying for that service or product so that value which we are trying to transfer or which we are trying to make the consumer feel uh, that he is getting that should be equal to or surpass the cost of the product to the consumer if you are uh, thinking that a product to be sold at rupees say 100 he should feel that he is getting value worth 125 so that will push him to get motivated to buy a product so a consistent performance in value creation is very important it leads to growth of trust in and loyalty towards your brand certain brands are there for the last 60 70 80 years they have maintained that consistent loyalty consistent trust because they have been innovating they have been creating that perception in the mind of the consumers that this is something which we can trust in and the consumer stays loyal to that brand now 
our basic focus we have discussed what marketing is, our basic focus is to go in for digital marketing because that is the tool of the modern world. So, no marketing strategy can be visualized without incorporating digital strategy and expression. And then digital marketing is all about thinking beyond any one communication channel or tool. It is not about a single tool or a single communication channel, it is about exchange of value. What is exchange of value? For a digital communicator or digital marketer, when you are able to draw the attention of the consumer, that is the exchange of value. You can, if you are able to draw him to look into your messaging through various channels through digital marketing, that is the currency you are dealing in basically. So, digital marketing proposes a distinct way of thinking about how people connect with the media, with each other and the world around them. This is a new means which through which people are connecting with each other, with the media, with the companies, businesses are communicating with consumers, consumers are communicating with businesses, businesses are communicating with each other. So, all these things are possible through digital marketing and different distinct ways are available through this tool which help us to uh, communicate. There have been certain social and technological changes in the world over the last 20 years. It has been evolving over the last 30, 40 years, but uh, in the last 20 years there has been a very, very big change. And what are those changes? Consumer behavior has been deeply influenced by the social media evolution. Today the maximum time a child or a even an adult spends is on social media. So, his behavior is deeply influenced by this revolution. Uh, and that positions social media as a very, very important tool for a marketeer. Broadband penetration has increased, speed has increased a lot. Today we are looking at 4G in India, 5G is going to be launched. It has been launched in maybe 10, 15 countries. It will enter India in the next couple of years. Internet usage has increased a lot and user expectation also from internet, from broadband it has increased a lot. So, looking into all these aspects, we feel that these technological changes are going to affect the business scenario also. Analytics is also available online. Analytics has allowed the monitoring of consumers behavior in real time, usage statistics, demographics, areas of interest, all these things can be monitored online for, for a user. Even uh, we are looking at uh, say, uh, sh shows on television, uh, real time monitoring is done on TRPs, who is viewing, from which segment of the people are viewing that. Similarly, for social media users, that kind of analytics is possible. Then another technological change which has really revolutionized the usage of uh, technology is that smart mobiles, tablets, th these things have made a lot of inroads. Lot of innovation has come into these technologies. Touch screen has made the usage of smartphones very easy. Hundreds and thousands of uh, applications have been developed for uh, smartphones and tablets, which will make the usage of these more and more important for a consumer. And looking at that time which a person spends on these technologies, these uh, gadgets, uh, a marketeer is naturally drawn to these technologies and gadgets. Google controls search worldwide, Google is monopolizing the search throughout the world and not only is it allowing you to search, it is also analyzing everything what is happening. That analytics part is a very, very important information which uh, a marketeer uses. Uh, internet technology basically is rightly regarded as a third wave of, wave of revolution after agricultural and industrial revolution. We had industrial revolution in the west 200 years ago, we had agricultural revolution in India in the 60s when we were having certain issues with food production. India basically jump started from agricultural to internet technology or soft revol industrial revolution. So, that it can have that jump start to reach directly to usage of software internet technology for growth of its economy. So, internet technology is a very, very important third wave of economic revolution, which will drive the economy in the 21st century. 
now how did digital marketing evolve? The first approaches to digital marketing defined it as a projection of conventional marketing, its tools and strategies on internet. It, digital marketing basically is a, a sub part of conventional marketing. The same tools, the same ideas, it has, they can be projected on digital marketing. It, it is also called online marketing, it is also called web marketing, it is also called internet marketing. So, these terms are synonymously used, certain countries use online marketing, in other countries digital marketing is used, web marketing is also a term which is prevalent. Digital marketing to define it is basically a term for marketing of products or services using digital technologies. So, digital technologies would involve primarily the use of internet but it also includes using mobile phones, display advertising and any other digital labels. While generic marketing or which we also call as the traditional marketing is about creating and satisfying demand, digital marketing propels the creation of demand using the powerful online tools through internet and satisfies this demand in a new and innovative way. So, innovation and new powerful online tools have been incorporated in the traditional uh, realm of marketing to create a much more better reach for a digital marketing experience. It first appeared in the 1990s, but with web 1.0 being very slow primarily as a static content, it really could not really come up in a big way. Banner advertising started in 1993. And the first web crawler, it was also named as web crawler, was created in 1994. So, that was the start of search engine optimization. In 1999, Google started to grow at a pace and Blogger was launched. That is when we can say modern internet age began. Blackberry created MySpace and that was the true beginning of social media. But Blackberry's MySpace had a limited success. So, Google presented AdWords, which was a real platform for growth. This really uh, started growing in a big way. First search engine was introduced in 1991 with a network protocol called Gopher for query and search. In 1993, the first clickable banner went live. Again in 1993, uh, this clickable banner, which was purchased by Hotwire, it was used for a few banner ads for their advertising. This marked the beginning of a new era which we call as the digital era of marketing. The first kind of digital marketing was banner advertisement. A banner came on your screen which was advertising some or the other product. That was how it started. 94 uh, Yahoo was launched, 98 saw the birth of Google, Microsoft launched MSN search engine and Yahoo brought to the market Yahoo web search. So, all these things were part of the evolution which led to the growth of digital marketing. In 2006, digital marketing really went in for a steep growth. At that time, search engine traffic had already grown to about 6.4 billion in a single month. So, that was a huge growth considering uh, what was happening before 2006. So, Google now began to expand and along with the social networking sites began to emerge. MySpace was the first social networking site, it was followed by Facebook and Facebook became very, very popular. By November 2019, we find that 74 percent approximately of the online population in US has accessed social networks. So, most popular online activity was text or instant messaging. 92 percent of the people were doing that. E-commerce revenue was 431 billion in 2020 and it is expected to increase to 563 billion by 2025. In 2019, the retail trade e-commerce sales amounted to 578 billion in US. So, these figures uh, look great in the Indian context. In the US context, they are not so great, but they still amount to something like 9 percent of the total e-commerce. So, that is uh, showing that uh, digital marketing, online commerce, all these things are increasing in a big way and likely to uh, take over at least equivalent to traditional marketing and traditional selling by another 10 years. 
two major social networking sites which are used by marketers they include linkedin twitter facebook these are some of the major sites which are used now what are the benefits of digital marketing we get a global audience there is audience convenience it is interactive it is cost effective we have ease of data analytics it gives you a level playing field very important it gives you real time results brand development and it can make a message go viral so when we talk of global audience the reach of the medium is worldwide uh, internet is a worldwide web so the reach of the medium is also worldwide and you can use this not only to target a local audience in your vicinity in your state in your country but also a transnational one across countries you can customize a campaign to a specific audience demographics analytics is possible like we discussed so demographics through each means is available to you you can customize your campaign to a specific audience its demographics such as gender location age the interests of your viewers Uh, this improves the effectiveness of the campaign then we look at audience convenience also the targeted audience has a choice of how they want to receive the content it is not forced down their necks they can choose their methodology to receive the content this preference may vary from reading a blog post to watching a youtube video so that is in their hands the choice for the viewer is limited in traditional marketing traditional marketing is a static marketing in a way that whatever you are dishing out the viewer has to look at it only in that way you are putting certain pamphlets in your newspaper that is going to reach you you want to see it not see it normally you get irritated looking at it most people dislike receiving sales flyers like i've taught in their mailbox or phone calls at awkward times on material they have little interest in but online people get the chance to opt in or out opt out of the communication you have your own decision if you want to go in for that communication or you don't want to go in for it and often it is relevant because they they were the ones searching for it in the first place normally how do you get communication on a particular product or a service in your google search this thing you put in certain keywords to search for something only then you get the communication so you are actually looking for that communication and uh, you are choosing when you want to look at it whether you are interested it in or not then it is a interactive medium in contrast to traditional marketing methods interaction with your audience is possible the prospects the clients the followers are encouraged to visit the website read about the company's products and services rate them buy them and provide feedback which is visible to the rest of the market for example you are looking at going for a tour through make my trip you decide your the hundreds of choices of planes reaching a particular place hundreds of hotels available in the city are available to you you can decide sitting at your home Uh, which particular service or product you are going to opt for you can rate them rating is available on the site through viewer comments so it is interactive that interaction with previous users helps you to rate a service which is available so all these things are also visible to the rest of the market so anybody else looking at the same service will get uh, the benefit of your experience when he is making a decision so this interactive feature is very very important it is cost effective less amount of money is required for digital marketing and certain people do invest in paid ads online but that is minuscule line and cost is still cheaper compared to traditional marketing data analytics we have already discussed is possible through it data and results are easily recorded you have analytic tools with each site each social media site these tools uh, are helping you to design your own campaigns uh, based upon the data you receive unlike traditional marketing methods one can see in real time what is working and what is not working and you can adapt very quickly you can change your tactics to improve the results it gives you a level playing field we are looking at this course for entrepreneurs so entrepreneur is somebody with limited resources if you are going in for traditional marketing you want to open a showroom somewhere somebody with um, a standing of 40 years 50 years and a lot of money has a showroom which is beautifully done up 
parallelly you may not have those kind of resources, but online you can uh, have a level playing field because online you are messaging your management of your website, management of your message is not call, going to cost you that amount of money. You can have an excellent uh, communication with, through, with your customers without really spending as much and that gives you a level playing field. Then you get real time results, you get immediate results about whether your particular campaign is succeeding or not. This can easily be seen through the number of visitors on your site, how many subscribers are there. So, that data will help you to analyze whether your campaign would be good enough or not. Anybody, a music company say uh, it launches a new music album, immediately uh, people start looking into it. Somebody says within a week of the launch it had had 5 million viewers. So, that shows that it is successful. On the other hand, if that viewership is not available, it is not successful. So, you need to uh, further change your strategy to make it more successful. Then brand development, a well maintained website with the quality content targeting the needs and adding value to your target audience can provide significant value and lead to generation of opportunities. So, the same can be said for utilizing social media channels and personalized email marketing you can use this to develop your brand and it makes your message go viral also. For example, you put some post on Facebook, you have 200 friends on Facebook. For example, you liked this product or a service on Facebook, 20 percent of your contacts out of those 200 see that liked post. So, your one message has been seen by 40 new prospects. Similarly, they also have contacts and the multiplier effect will be enormous. That is why high quality content which can attract attention is so important online. Uh, so, dear participants, uh, to end the first part of our module uh, on digital marketing and branding, we have in this lectures seen what digital marketing is about, how is it different from marketing, what are its benefits, how is it helping us brand our product and idea. In the next module, we shall carry forward with our other contents. Thank you.